Now typically today we would be celebrating the feast of St. Padre Pio, but since it falls on a Sunday, he gets bumped. But I figured I would give you a couple of insights on St. Padre Pio to connect with our gospel message here today. St. Padre Pio was an extraordinary man because he was extraordinarily in tune with our Lord Jesus Christ. So much so, he shared with our Lord two great qualities. First, Padre Pio had great concern with those who suffered, especially children. An Italian woman once gave this testimony. She said, my son was playing football out in the street. He bumped up against an iron gate and it fell on him. We realized an unstoppable loss of blood from the nose and his left ear. My son was immediately brought to the hospital. His condition was bad, but he had an absent look in his face. There was a lot of excitement among the doctors. While I was crying and suffering, I turned my eye to the wall, and there on the wall I could see a photo of Padre Pio. As much faith as I could muster, I asked him to help my son. Due to his critical health, my son was moved to another hospital because he was in a state of shock. However, the following day, my son started to improve. After three days, he left the hospital. Before going back home, we entered into a church to thank God. In the church, there was a picture of St. Padre Pio. My son saw the picture and said, Mom, he was also with me in the hospital room. In fact, he came and gave me a hug. Many, many such miracles attributed to St. Padre Pio in this very manner. But as we all know, Padre Pio also shared the wounds of our Lord Jesus as he had the stigmata, the visible wounds in the hands, feet, and side. In fact, one day a doctor was finishing up with a hernia operation on Padre Pio when his curiosity got the best of him. So he took a look at the side of Padre Pio with the wound. Of course, the wound represents where our Lord Jesus was pierced by the spear, right? He took a look at where the wound was on Padre Pio, and sure enough, a doctor found a cross-shaped wound in his side. But coming out of the wound was light. And the doctor testifies to what he saw. There was light coming from there. So when Padre Pio brought Christ to others through Mass, through confession, through his miracles, he was so one with our Lord Jesus, he even possessed the light of our Lord. Many of you once brought great light to the people in your lives, the light of Christ itself. And many of you simply need to go back to that state where you can bring that light of Christ to others once again. So what am I talking about? In our gospel today from St. Mark, our Lord Jesus gives the apostles a very powerful lesson. See, on the way back to Capernaum, they were arguing about who was the greatest. Typical guys, right? But our Lord, he calls a child into their midst and says, whoever receives a child like this in my name receives me, and of course, the one who sent me. Children, most especially, have the great ability to recognize Jesus and then bring Jesus to others. But it happened just last week at the 11 o'clock Mass. It happens all the time. I've probably seen it 500 times in my priesthood. We're walking in Mass, the processional cross, you know, the, the server it has. Little bitty, little bitty thing. She must have been maybe three, four months. Looks up. She recognized the one on the cross. So very often, leave in church, you know, Jesus, Jesus, those little ones know. They know exactly what's going on. Where sometimes, those big ones, we forget. Now, don't you forget, as I've mentioned in homilies past, you were once in the presence of God himself. He spoke your name, and then there you were in the womb of your mother. That's not just nice words. That's how God does it. He speaks, and then something is created. That's how he did it with you. And you were there in your womb, your mother's womb, with God. That's exactly why the restlessness that the saints talk about, especially St. Augustine, we're never really able to be content in this life. Why? We saw God. And until we have God back in our hearts, we're never going to fully be content until we rest in him. Well, children are such great carriers of light, the light of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And many of us were quite childlike for a while, full of wonder, full of the Spirit, full of light. But then, we got a little bit too much of the world in us, a little too much of ourselves got in the way, 
the brilliant light we will once be able to bring to others has been snuffed out. So what does the Lord tell us then today? You're done? You're hopeless? That's it? No. He says, we need to be able to become like children again. We need to become childlike. Now, many people have the misunderstanding of what Jesus means when he says we have to be like little children. He's not asking us to be childish. You're not going to have God's grace come upon you if you're moaning and whining and crying. Okay, that's not how that works, okay? He's also not telling you to be passive dependent, someone who can't do anything for yourself, mindless, like an unthinking robot. I mean, that, that's not how it works either. You see, being naive does not make up who a child of God is. We know, especially through faith, but we still have a heart of a child. And so what Jesus is asking us then, when he tells us we need to be like children, is that we need to be teachable once again. To stop thinking we know everything there is to know about religion, about God, about the church, about the Bible, about everything. We don't know everything. And just because you've been through religious ed, what, 35 years ago? Just because you receive the sacrament of confirmation, man, okay, I'm graduate, graduated what, man? You're not done. Many people have gotten PhDs in theology and are still in danger of losing their souls. Knowledge might give us some power, but knowledge by itself cannot save us. So we have to be able to be taught once again. So here are 10 quick lessons we can learn from children that were compiled by the writer Aaron James. And she brings up some wonderful things about the very young. It's sad, but by the time our little ones reach second or third grade, a lot of these lessons have been forgotten. Let's put them back into play, especially with us big kids, okay? So number one, let go of grudges. Here's an example. Two little ones, Jack and Jill, they're playing, okay? Jack goes and smacks Jill right in the head, okay? So there, there goes Jill crying to mom, Jack hit me. Okay, you know how that goes, all right? Well, here comes mom, and mom scolds Jack, and now he starts crying. But five minutes later, all is forgiven. Everything's well. Children are more inclined to apologize and mean it. As adults, we hold grudges like nobody's business, man. And because we dwell and harbor on past hurts done to us, our ability to forgive and move forward, it doesn't come so easily anymore. Change that. Number two, pray with the heart. How can you not be touched by the innocence of a child's prayer? If you listen to a child praying aloud, you hear not just their conviction, but you see what's on their hearts in that very moment. And in that moment, the only person they care about listening to them is the only person that matters, God. And often you hear children pray for the simplest of things, but very straightforward. That's a great lesson in prayer. Simply come to our God in confidence with your thoughts, desires, or troubles. Don't complicate the matter. Number three, live in the moment. Children have the incredible ability to live right now in the present moment. How often do you think about a mistake you made 20 years ago? You haven't shaken it off yet? How often are you concerned about a future which may or may not even come to pass? Children live for the moment at any given time because they know something. Who is also present in the moment at any given time? God. Number four, be open to learning. Many times we are opposed to changing and learning new things. It can be hard for us to admit that we don't know all there is to know. But children love to learn new things. They put their whole heart into the learning experience. And if the learning experience is of that of God and the church, our Lord Jesus, the saints, and so forth, that wholehearted effort is going to produce a lot of fruit. Number five, Love unconditionally. Children, especially the little ones, they're not likely to pick apart their peers. See, children do not determine friendships the same way we do as adults. As adults, we're more likely to judge first and make friends later. Children are more likely to make friends first and maybe not even judge at all. 
They just want somebody to play with. Trivial, trivial opinions then do not matter. Number six, still believe that dreams can happen. And don't you just love it when children come up to you and tell you what they, what they want to be when they grow up? It's just like, wow, that's pretty cool and so forth, right? Even though a cynical adult, ah, that's never going to happen, man. They think it's going to happen. Not sure it might change often, but every time there's a new idea that comes up into their minds, they're convinced that they're going to be able to achieve it. You can hear their confidence. What happened to our confidence? We're Catholics, man. We're the most confident people on the planet. Adults can be so self-destructive. We lose our confidence and we doubt our gifts and our callings. And if our doubting is on our gifts and callings from God, then we're in a little bit of trouble. Number seven, be able to follow willingly. A little child will let you take your hand and let you lead them. Isn't that amazing? Because they trust in your ability to keep them safe. The same trust we should have with God our Father. We put our trust into God and let him lead us rather than trying to go our own way. We wouldn't face as many hardships as we do. It's just that simple. Number eight, try something new. We can become too comfortable in our lifestyles or lack, lose track, you know, trying to reach out to new people or new, new grace that God wants to give to us. But children love the excitement of something new. They view the world as a place full of surprises and this love to explore. God is the God of surprises. Think of him as this great, great land, willing and ready to be explored. Don't ever lose that sense of wonder, okay? Number nine, be helpful. Now, true children can sometimes become a little bit lazy. Where do they get that laziness from? They learned it. Well, oftentimes, though, an attitude has been learned from us. Let's just be honest about it. But children who are encouraged to be helpful, they bring a lot of light and grace to others, and they do so so wonderfully, so willingly. And number 10, appreciate the beauty of all that is around us. Children still notice the wow moments of life. Sometimes we miss those. It's not hard to impress a child, but an adult can walk right past something beautiful and not even give it a second thought. Life's distractions can prevent us from being aware of some of the simplest, yet greatest gifts in our lives. A beautiful sunset can often be overlooked and overshadowed because of our worries and concerns. Don't forget God wants to bless you with beauty, especially if you have worries and concerns. He's still reaching out to you. Don't miss those moments. So God is ever ready to help us to get our hearts back to being like those little children. In fact, the same Matthew, he quotes our Lord in saying, Truly I say to you, unless you convert and become like little children, you should not enter the kingdom of heaven. So the next time you're watching children in action, allow yourself the great privilege of learning from them. Perhaps you too will get the light of Jesus Christ back in your heart.